So Downton Abbey A New Era is obviously set in a very specific time in British history and I know uh, you worked with a lot of vintage textiles for this project. Can you explain that process a little bit? Was that any more difficult than working, you know, with sort of modern fabrics? Um, yes, it's infinitely harder, um, harder to find, um, especially during COVID. Our way of working um, mm -hmm. during that time was really challenging um, and then harder to maintain. Um, they require a lot of restoration and mm -hmm. sort of bringing them up to scratch so that they are camera ready. Um, and then you're working with these really delicate pieces to either um, incorporate them into a new make or just restore them as they are. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we're surrounded by vintage textiles just yeah. within this small selection here. Yeah. yeah, And they're beautiful, absolutely beautiful. But I was curious, in terms of a film that's set in a time like this, how do you combine historical accuracy with creating an aesthetic? Because obviously you want a cohesive look for these pieces. How much are you willing to sort of sacrifice like absolute historical accuracy for a, for a good look? That's a very good question. Um, and I think Downton is famed and really prides itself on its authenticity and its historical accuracy. But I think those two things are slightly different. Mm -hmm. um, and whilst we're striving for full authenticity, it's not always entirely historically accurate. It can't be. Mm -hmm. um, my way of, of thinking about it is that I'm curating it with a modern viewpoint. Mm -hmm. So I am looking at the construction and the way the costumes are put together and using textiles that would only have existed at that time. But some of the textiles are modern, so mm -hmm. it's not, you know, it, it can't be 100%, but it's about always striving for it to feel as authentic as I can. Mm -hmm. um, and I think by using vintage materials, accessories, jewellery, beading, um, even a button, that, that anchors it to that time and makes it feel more authentic. Mm -hmm. um, and you're sort of viewing it through a contemporary lens, so it's like it's our take on what, as an audience, we would find the most covetable from that time mm -hmm. and putting that together. Did you have any sort of sort of style icons that you look to for reference, maybe Hollywood stars for, you know, Myrna Dalglish and things like that? Yes, absolutely. We looked at all the Hollywood greats. Um, we were looking at Marlene Dietrich, um, Greta Garbo, Myrna Loy. Um, yeah, like, you know, all of the sort of superstars of that era and looking at what was different about Hollywood glamour, mm -hmm. the sort of high octane beauty sitting alongside the kind of classical beauty of the ladies of Downton. So it was a lovely sort of juxtaposition of two very different aesthetics. Yeah, I was going to ask, you know, you've got the, the costumes for the trip to the south of France, you've got the Hollywood costumes, you've got the regular Downton costumes. That must have been a challenge, right, to come up with so many sort of different looks for, you know, very different sets of people, right? Definitely, but it was lovely. I mean, I think when I first got the script, every page I turned, it was like, oh, hooray, like this, this whole, you know, a new challenge, a new chapter, a new look. And being able to explore completely different palettes was really refreshing mm -hmm. and being able to contrast it with the palette that we you know know and love so much from the abbey itself so um it was a glorious challenge um but it was it was a very prolific film in terms of costumes so there were a great number of them but they were all like equally wonderful to to find and define that way yeah did you in designing in terms of emotional journeys with characters did that play into design at all or was it more sort of the era and the the aesthetic that you were looking for I think it's always a balance of those two things and I think you know Downton is very well established and we know the characters but that doesn't mean that they're static they're always moving through time and there's always things happening to them and they're inhabiting a world so we're always looking to tease out what those story arcs are um, but some people more than others so for example Lucy is completely different mm -hmm. in this film to how we saw her in the last film and her circumstances have completely changed so it gave us the opportunity to really express her through clothing and have fun and sort of show a kind of blossoming of her style because she all of a sudden had the ability to sort of, you know, publicly wear whatever she wanted to wear. So well, that was all my questions, so thank you so much. <laughs> thank you very much indeed.